video is about experimental errors. Now we're going to learn about three different types of experimental errors. So let's start with the first error, sample size error. So let's say you stumble upon a study that claimed that three out of four dentists prefer uh, and recommend AIM toothpaste over the leading brands. What would you conclude? Well, probably that AIM is uh, superior to Colgate and other brands. Uh, you have good reason to believe it um, if 75% of dentists recommend it over all the other ones. But what would you say if only four dentists were interviewed and three of them said they prefer AIM? Well, probably you'll, you'll conclude that there's just not enough information. Um, there are not enough dentists. Uh, it could be by chance that we just happen to find three dentists that prefer AIM uh, over the leading brands. So in other words, our sample size is too small uh, to, to make a, conclu a conclusion with any level of confidence. What if the three dentists uh, uh, interviewed just happen to be outliers? Uh, it happened, you just happen to get them by sheer chance or dumb luck. Now what if we increase that sample size though uh, to 400 dentists and 300 of them, again 75%, preferred aim. Now it seems like we're getting somewhere. But let's say we increase it even more to 4,000 dentists and 3,000 of those dentists prefer aim. Well then we'll have a, we'll have a good enough reason to, to think that aim is, is superior. Um, so this brings us to our first experimental error, which is our sample size error. Sample size error is when too few test subjects are in an experiment. When the sample size is too small, then the results can be explained by chance or pure coincidence. Just like finding those three dentists that preferred AIM um, out of four. Now, if, in order to, to improve the experiment, we have to increase our sample size, which will make it less likely that our results can be explained to, to just pure chance. Just like finding 3,000 out of 4,000 dentists would probably not be explained by chance. So if that's the case, if we have a large sample size, then you know, we have some level of confidence in our experiment. Now let's talk about our second error, experimental error. So now going back to the initial experiment about the dentist, uh, so suppose you want to increase the sample size uh, and you go searching for more dentists. Uh, so you find 400 more dentists um, to help minimize the sample size error. You survey them and you find, again, 75% of them prefer AIM. But on second reflection, you realize that all these dentists come from the same dental school. And you wonder if there's a problem, if there could be a problem here. And it occurs to you that perhaps something is weird or special um, or unique about this this particular dental school. So you do a little bit more research and you find out that in that school they only used AIM in their classes. Well now it occurs to you that selecting um, test subjects from the same school was not a good idea uh, because the school might not be representative of the entire dental po community or population. Um, so this brings us to our second important error in experimental design, uh, selection bias. Selection of bias, excuse me, selection bias occurs when test subjects are chosen in a non-random way or in a biased way. So not only do we want our test sample to be large, but we want it to be diverse because we want it to be representative of the, the, the greater population that we're trying to find out information about. So by choosing test subjects in a non-random way, so from the same dental school, um, it's not a good idea because that population might not be diverse enough. And it, it might not be representative of the entire population. So when we're choosing uh, test subjects, like dentists, for example, we want to get you know, test subjects from different schools. We want them to uh, be, have a different race, different class, different gender. You know, we want them to just to be representative of the pop population we're trying to study. Um, so one way that we can combat uh, selection bias 
is by randomly selecting test subjects. So as we're, we're getting our test subjects, we make sure that we, we randomize our sample, that we get them from many different places, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so when we, when we randomly uh, select test subjects, then we minimize or we help to minimize selection bias error. So now let's talk about our final and third error. So recall that the independent variable is the variable that we manipulate in an, in an experiment. And in this experiment uh, or survey uh, to the dentist, we give them a choice between AIM and Colgate, for example. So let's say we gather our 400, 4,000 dentists uh, from different schools, males and females, different ages. So we manage to get a large and varied sample size. So we present the dentists with garlic flavored Colgate on one side and ultra mint flavored AIM on the other side. So 75% of the dentists again prefer AIM, but the question is how can we be sure that it's the AIM toothpaste that they're preferring and not the flavor that they're preferring? What if they prefer the ultra mint flavor uh, as opposed to garlic and it has nothing to do with AIM or Colgate? And this is the reason why we can only change one variable in an experiment. So we need to make sure that the dentists are getting comparable or similar or the same flavor of toothpaste um, when we're presenting them, when we're only changing the, the brand of toothpaste. So this brings us to our third error, and this is a confounder error. A confounding variable or confounder is a hidden variable that might explain our results. Now that definition might not be so helpful. I tend to think of a confounder as a variable that should have been constant, should have been a controlled variable, but it was not. And in those cases, we can't be sure that our manipulated variable or this, or this uncontrolled variable is the explanation for our results. So while we should have kept the flavor of the toothpaste constant, we did not. And so flavor is a confounding variable. So in order to minimize this, we basically have to you know, try to identify all the possible variables in our experiment and control them, keep them constant, and only manipulate the independent variable. So hopefully you have a good idea of sample size, selection bias, and confounding errors. Thank you.